Okay. Hi everyone. Hello and good afternoon everyone. Thank you for joining us today for the first Lean Digital Transformation Masterclass by Cyber Media Research and BT and BT. Today's masterclass is specifically on building the right digital business excellence model. Hi, I am Shayun De, Senior Editor at Cyber Media Research, and I am going to be your host for the session today. Before we proceed further, please note that throughout the duration of this session, all the participants will be in listen-only mode. All the uh, If you have any questions, then you can post them directly in the chat window in front of you, and we'll do a Q&A session at the end of the masterclass. So to briefly set the context for today's session, as we all know that the pandemic made digital transformation an immediate need. So any plans to undergo digital transformation over a few years had to be done immediately. Now that we are hopefully coming out of the pandemic, it is time for every enterprise to rethink their digital transformation strategy and overcome all of its shortcomings. Our session today focused on the concept of lean digital transformation, how to incorporate it in your own business and how to build the perfect model for digital operation to achieve business excellence. This is of course easier said than done as so many questions come into, my, come into one's mind and answers to be found and so many issues are there which need to be addressed. To address all such questions and all such issues on lean digital transformation and how to build the perfect digital business excellence model, it is my pleasure to introduce you to our expert speaker of today, Mr. V. Srinivasa Rao, Chairman and MD of BT and BT. So team, can we please have Mr. Rao on the screen along with me? Hi, good day. Oh, good day, Mr. Rao. Welcome, Mr. Rao. Thank you for joining us today. Before I hand over the screen to you, allow me to give a brief introduction about you to our attendees. Mr. Rao has 26 years of experience in diverse IT industry and has worked in senior executive position at many IT majors like TCS, Infosys, iGate, Tech Mahindra, Satyam, etc. He is not only a business leader, he is a renowned speaker and author and a social entrepreneur. He recently authored a great book named Lean Digital Thinking, which you can read on Amazon Kindle. He also acts as a chief digital officer, consultant, and advisor at BT and BT. So welcome again, Mr. Rao, and I hand over the audience to you. Thank you, and thank you so much. So uh, thanks everyone for joining this uh, session. Uh, I'm sure digitalization, digital transformation, these uh, words we have been using for many years, Maybe for the last five years, I think it has been uh, it becoming an everyday effort. So what is that uh, new things we are going to speak? Probably you may decide at the end whether I'm going to share some of my practical experiences and uh, how to make uh, the digitalization or digital transformation successful. So some of my experience I would like to share. So the way I want to speak today with you or want to have a discussion with you is uh, so what is this new digital world? I mean, I'm sure you might say I know everything or I may something or I may, may not know. So considering all these, I think, dimensions, I would like to set the context like uh, what is this new digital world and uh, why we need to digitalize? Okay, I'm confident I will try to touch upon some of the things what probably you have not experienced it till now. So if you already experienced, then we can have a great discussion. The second part is, I think, uh, most of the digitalization or digital transformation initiatives, how do you ensure that there is a structured approach? It's not like something I think our competitors start, started or some uh, changing situations, trends, or shifts and all. I think uh, there must be a structured framework for digitalization with uh, playbooks, with the required tools and uh, techniques and best practices or templates. Okay, and also the phase life cycle for digitalization, all those things needs to be there. And third, I think uh, it's not only just uh, digitalizing, you also need to operationalize whatever you digitalize. Most of the times the failure happens, we passionately drive the digital programs and uh, roll out uh, the outcomes of the digital programs. But every day the customers or employees or our stakeholders may not be using the outcomes of the digitalization, then I think it is like operation success, but patient fail. I think we need to really come out of that situation. Finally, what skills I think you as leaders need to acquire. Our whole focus for starting this session, the master series is how to empower the business executives 
so that they become confident and they can start asking the technology guys what they need and they also become the digital business innovators okay so empowering the business is the whole object of this particular session we talk less on the technologies and more of the impact of technologies on the business okay so with that note uh, let me start my presentation so i hope you are able to see the presentation it is clear just one second okay so how do we unlock the power of digitalization let me share a few of the examples which you already might have seen a few but a few things could be very interesting so in this new digital world look at here a t-shirt has sensors or it's some small electrode is there it reads your heart health and the health indicators are sent to the mobile phone maybe to your doctor or maybe to your near and dear immediately if any interventions required you can take it so that the t-shirt has become a medical device today okay this one again the power of technologies we'll talk about it look at here the human body you have a glucose sensor and transmitter one side and it reads what is the glucose level in our body and there is a pump and based on the insulin uh, insulin level the pump will pump whatever the level of insulin required through the injection that is infusion set you don't need to worry about diabetics now so this will take care okay the power of technology so here this is a manufacturing plant siemens it's a bottling plant no human beings one machine is uh, just reading the rfid tag instructions on the bottle on the bottle there is a sticker and with probably rfid tag is there with all the instructions the machine one i think uh, the bottle with that tag comes there and next it is going to the machine where it knows which liquid needs to be filled in there then it go to the next one automatically it put a screw on spout and finally it will give a label no human beings right so this is only one example of the shop floors today very interesting look at here bed sheet it is eight sleeve so look at you can adjust the temperature at both side left side and right side if your partner wants some warm temperature you can have there if you want very cold temperature this side you can have that right and it will read your health indicators when you sleep on the bed and it can be used as an alarm right so i mean the bed sheets are becoming intelligent and the bed sheets in, in fact the some other examples are there i can set through mobile phone app when i lie down on this bed what music should be on in my room what light should be on in my room what is the ac temperature i want to have in this room everything you can set when you are in office when you come home you lie down everything is set this is the intelligent bed sheet then the intelligent shoe especially in the uh, unsafe areas where uh, the workers are working i think the light is not there or the path is not good or you are falling and all this is intelligent shoe which will show the path and it will also alert you when you are not properly going and then probably falling or something like that okay this is a very interesting thing look at here the bank i am not a guy who does great exercise but physical exercise but it is encouraging now if you do more and more physical exercise you will get better interest and the money which you deposit in my bank the power of technology they are tracking your health indicators using fitbit or some other uh, relevant stuff and they take the what is that health exercises you are doing and they are encouraging my dear friend if you do better exercises you get better interest right so all is possible with technologies now okay now everybody is talking for the last one year especially our friend joker uh, uh, talk about metaverse now this bank has started uh, avatars of their employees and then you can get into metaverse you can have a conversation you can get information about the bank and all you don't need to go to physical bank you just get immersed into the virtual bank but these uh, metaverse is being used for today mostly for information and a little bit of customer support but not for the uh, real transactions as such in the metaverse it getting there so this is another interesting thing you go to a retail store uh, for example me went to the retail store and but i have the app of that particular retail store which is in my mobile phone and i go nearer to this 
maybe 50 meters away from that mannequin immediately i get a message welcome yes and after that it will show hey you know one thing uh, what is the the attire i have that cost this much and it is uh, available in aisle number xyz or you want to order through e-commerce just go uh, this link and then order it so what is the presence they are giving right what an experience they are giving not only that in the retail stores today you have we are ar mirrors you don't need any dress change rooms right so by looking at the mirror you can really try different styles of attires and car is a platform today car is not uh, car is a platform and also car is a big software system which has millions and millions of lines of code right it has uh, music it has internet navigation audio video games what not so it has become a big software system right uh, this is interesting uh, i think uh, i'll put the sound okay this robo are you able to hear the sound the sound your name is trying to do the work of the, the construction labor is going and getting there and this is just beginning the labor part is actually a very complex part of the business but as it is back of employment that the different parts of the process you get the guy he is acting like human being right so the other interesting thing look at here how the tiling in the construction industry is happening these are all the roof of these homes the guys taking the tile So now, maybe five years, that guy becomes pretty faster. Can do the styling of a room in one hour. Okay, so all those things are coming up now. The power of technology. See, I touch the phone almost every industry: healthcare, manufacturing, retail, banking, uh, real estate. What not? What I'm trying to emphasize here: technology is not only every sector. example so in summary if you look at uh, every equipment could be a pacemaker could be a fighter jet or it could be a boeing or it could be a car or it could be a chair or a, a bed sheet or a baby diaper it doesn't matter every physical object is injected with software okay they are technologically driven don't you think now this is a sea change so you look at there the services got changed the business models got changed the products got changed the assets also whatever assets are there they are getting changed just because of the technologies right i think this is the context i would like to set so you look at all these examples the power and all the business people have to understand this right they have to understand that my god this is touching my retail store this is touching my operations in the manufacturing plant this is completely touching my construction industry whatever i am doing in the day to day work and in the bank the way i am going to interact with my customers is changing etc etc so the business people have to really understand the applications of technology said the business side it's not just simply technologies right okay why this happening why all these things are happening i am sure there should be a reason right i mean in the last 10 years we have been talking about digitalization i started uh, the digital business uh, at tech mind right in 2012 at that time not many people understood but today okay people really the acceleration phase started okay so this is happening because just one reason the convergence of technologies for example i am a person who came from it the information technologies i worked with tata i worked with mahindra and i worked with uh, Infosys, Satyam, Technology, that is IT. And then you have 
different type of companies which come from operational technologies. They have been there for last many decades. Could be Siemens, Philips, Caterpillar and all. They deal with sensors, they deal with the machine to machine in the past. Okay, today we are talking about IoT and all. The operational technologies are the technologies which give life to things. Like you saw that, right? When I say life to things, what? If you take uh, any physical object like a chair or a car or something, they can sense, they can uh, uh, process the data, they can think, they can communicate, they can even predict to some extent. That's why I'm calling, we are giving life to things and they are working with us also with human beings. That is OT. And the CT is the communication and collaboration technologies. Where were when 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, 6G already working? China and South Korea are also working on that. So on short range transportation networks like the Six Low Pan, Zigbee's, Loravan, right? That is communication. A lot of, I think, uh, innovations happen. And most importantly, the collaboration technologies like social media, the co-innovation, crowdsourcing, collaborative, video conferencing, like what we are doing in the Zoom today, they're all collaborative technologies. So when IT plus OT plus CT got converged, the intersection point has, I think, the power. That's where all the examples what I showed in the previous screens, we are able to do just because of the convergence of IT, CT. Would you look at any example, you will have all these three technologies, whatever I've shown. But when I expand all these technologies, look at here, almost more than 20 technologies are there. Okay, you, you, if you exclude uh, probably biotechnology, uh, maybe I, I think you can have probably 12 to 15 technologies are there. So IT, which we already there, and then you have CT, which we already talked about, and the collaboration also there. Okay, I think this is what the whole, I think the change happening because of, I coin this as a modern cyber system. When IT plus CT plus OT, and the intersection is called modern cyber system. If you go to life sciences industry, you also have BT, that is biotechnology, okay? So the operational technologies and the domain specific technologies might vary, but the key message here is, it is not individual technologies, the intersection, the innovation lies, the power lies at the intersection of technologies, the fusion of technologies. Okay, when they got intersected and the fusion happening, new capabilities got emerged, which we never imagined in our life. Why everybody is talking about digitalization? Imagine this is the first step. There are new capabilities emerged which were not there in the past. Number one, intelligent things possible today. Intelligent car, intelligent chair, intelligent robot is doing the total security and safety today, right? So there are intelligent things are there. They are working with people today. And omnipresent, anywhere, anytime, using any device, you can offer the services. Or I can get the services. I can share the information. I can get the information, right? Anywhere, anytime, using any device which was not there in the past. All these technologies convergence again. Then, if we are hyper connected, which was not possible, but today you have chatbots, bots, robots, smart contracts, things, what, everything, human beings, the human workforce and digital workforce are working together. This cap capability was not there in the past. Then, humanless operations, you have seen the Siemens, the factory 4.0. China, I think, in one of the manufacturing shop floor, they removed 90% of the staff. It is autonomous operations. Then human intelligence is enhanced. My intelligence with my experience, I am able to take decision. But if it is augmented with artificial intelligence, machine learning algorithms, that is called virtual brains. So that is possible. You can augment the human intelligence. I can see the future. Today, using the technologies, using predictive models and simulation models, I can see the future. And I can also recommend, I can also get automatic recommendations. And finally, it is easy to ex extend your business ecosystem, integrating with suppliers, partners. And the ecosystem partnership is not just your own ecosystem. You have to integrate with so many other suppliers and partners easily with the technologies available today. And the last but not least is you don't need to travel today. You can co-innovate sitting at home. And all of us now can come onto the collaborative platform. We can have a innovation, we can learn each other, right? And we can also have virtual operations for taking the decisions and all. So these are the new capabilities. If somebody says that, what is this? Why everybody's talking about digitalization? Yes, my dear friend, the convergence and the intersection of the technologies have given so many new capabilities. If my competition is embracing or new companies are emerging, I will become irrelevant if I don't use these capabilities.
right? I think that's one key message. Okay, all that capabilities created something I call the Troika. So whatever capabilities I told that is a modern cyber system, IT plus CT plus OT plus BT, it created a Troika, that means a new economy, which is driven by digital products, digital services, the job opportunities in the digitalization, your exports, your investments, your imports, and all around technology, all around my, my modern cyber system. That's why it is called the economy is driven by digitalization, right? And then next one is the revolution, industry revolution today, because of the modern cyber system, we are living in a fourth industrial revolution. We moved from first, second, and third. Electricity, uh, sorry, steam engines and electricity, IT and electronics, now we are in the different area. That is a modern cyber system. And finally, hyper-connectivism. People to people connected, but I think real time, not unlike in the past. And people to things connected in real time. And things to things get connected in real time. Car can talk to car. Okay. So this is the world what we are living in. With that, I think uh, I would like to summarize the modern cyber system has created a new revolution. You look at in the middle. If it is impact in the physical systems like manufacturing industries and all, that's where Germany introduced cyber physical systems called Industry 4.0. If it is impacting the uh, social systems like public education, public health care, citizen services, mostly government or NGOs, it is a social society 4.0. If it is impacting the businesses and enterprises on the processes, products, services, business models, then it is enterprise 4.0. And this modern cyber system is also impacting human body. The modern cyber system can repair so many illnesses, right? So that is biology 4.0. So when somebody says fourth industrial revolution, it is not industry 4.0. That is only one element of fourth industrial revolution. Okay. So all happening because of modern cyber system with the convergence of technologies and with the new capabilities. With that note now, let me summarize now. You understand the few examples. You also understand the convergence of technologies and new capabilities. Now let me share why you need to digitalize. So in this context, there are three important inflection points you need to look at as an organization, whether you are from the board of directors or CXOs or business heads. Number one, who is my customer? Any change? Because of these technological innovations, it's not only you are getting access. In fact, the customers, your customers, your employees are getting access to new technologies ahead of you, right? So the customers, that means what their needs, what their wants, what are their problems, what are their expectations, what is their behavior, you understand that or not, this is one important trigger point or inflection point. The second is your competition is changing. Not from your line of business. I'll explain that. And then physical and digital worlds are getting converged. Today I'm sitting at my home, I'm using the Zoom, it is a digital world. I am at the physical, we are converging. And I am working with Robo, it is a digital world, but I am a human being, the physical and digital world got converged. These three are the very important points you need to look at in the context of your businesses. So look at here the customers. Every 60 seconds, I am sure you might have seen this screen. Every 60 seconds in the internet, what is happening? So many millions of videos are seen, millions of messages are exchanged. Millions of mails are exchanged, audios, videos, whatnot, right? That means the speed at which the communication happening. And the exposure to this caused a lot of change in the customers. They look for continuous newness. In 90s and uh, 2000s, uh, mobile phones used to be released uh, 24 months, 36 months, 18 months. But now, three months, four months. Okay, newness, newness. Come on, new technologies are coming. I want metaverse enabled services, for example. Okay. And then no tolerance, please. If your services are not good, product is not good, immediately I go and voice out my opinion in social media and I might change immediately. There is no tolerance. And not services and products. We are expecting unforgettable moments of experience. When I go to the bank, for example, I expect a personalized experience. They already did my persona based on my social media profile, probably LinkedIn, Facebook. Insta and all. They already gathered all my information. They did the sensitivity analysis and they started giving my personalized ads on the Facebook, which is already happening. And when I go to the bank also, based on my profile and persona, they might give the gifts which will make me happy. That is the experience. Okay. So that's what I think the purchase decisions are no more talking to few people. 
you go and search, search in the internet millions of people are saying this product is good this service is good or bad your decision not change even movies today we are seeing just by seeing in the internet i'm sure you agree with me right what the number of stars are given by the viewers right so that is your customer okay then very very challenging who is your competition in any industry just think about it gafam google apple microsoft amazon all these guys are our comp facebook they are all slowly encroaching into the other industries banking and google and apple entered into the automotive and apple and samsung just took over the watch business okay and one telecom company is acquiring a healthcare company so you don't know who is our competition so you have to look at unlike in the past gafam is our competition and the digital lizards i call them the tech startups healthcare tech startups fintech right and the real estate real uh, the build build tech whatever different techs are there right and they are also your traditional organizations which have been there for a long time they are not born digitals like these they are called digital immigrants okay you digital immigrants my dear friends you need to look at the gafam and the digital lizards and your line of business also somebody is ahead of you they might be already using the digitalization i think it is a nightmare your competition landscape is changed because of the modern cyber system so how to compete with them right how do you basically move forward now look at here the physical and digital world the physical world could be social systems like uh, public health public education enterprise systems like businesses manufacturing systems by law these are all physical world right and if you look at the digital world i think there are some intelligent cars intelligent machines intelligent equipment and intelligent devices and immersive world like metaverse for example or ar vr and the communication network this is called digital world when this plus this called combined that's where it is happening today because of the modern cyber system we call digital so we need to understand that you are living in a digital world not physical or digital separately so with these three inflection points your whole context your reference points that change what your customer is different your competition is different your operations will change because of the digital lot of human interventions will be reduced and a different way you take the decisions okay so these three inflection points are there that's where you need to take a decision of i think you need to digitalize so what is now voice of organizations like you technology has become driving force not the enabler this i am sure many of you may not agree but we can have a separate discussion and debate on that technology is not enabler today it's a challenge technology is the driving force okay is the driving force or is one of the driving forces yes one of the driving forces and also the driving force we will discuss that okay next is what uh, organizations are saying we don't want to sell uh, services and products and all with this that and all we want to sell experience okay so that i can have a lifelong customer so experience design is a new subject today and with this digital world i want to optimize my human interventions i want to provide services faster better cheaper and cost effectively because the digital world i have to leverage and then we want to create it's not like just simply uh, operational excellence if you modern cyber system you are not able to create new revenue streams you are not able to reach the new customer segments what's the point having all these things one of the hospitals they basically did uh, leverage this modern cyber system they opened the primary healthcare centers in the rural india from all the cities now they are offering excellent services to the rural population it's not a government primary care centers it is a private primary care centers right and they never explored that business in the past they were always in the metro cities but today they are able to grab that to take the advantage of the business at what at the rural india right so like that you need to look for any new opportunities any new market expansions any new customer segments okay or uh, any new channels to reach the customers if i don't get answers the display this is of no use right so this is another interesting thing and i want to leave from my competition but very difficult the gap of lizards your own with that note i think we need to digitalize okay i think this is the summary so i think i talked about uh, why digitalize i'm sure you all agree now it is becoming really very complex but unfortunately even you know that reason why we digitalize do you think the nokia doesn't know what changes are coming in 
do you think blackberry doesn't know what changes are coming in i am sure they know what changes are coming in but they disappear right they know why digitalize but what is the point of discussion here is 75% of the digital transformation initiatives are not successful this is very alarming millions and billions of dollars are spent all over the world but there is no roi i think that needs to be addressed right so that's where this is my i think uh, the personal experience i translated there are so many business excellence models in the world i am sure some of senior executives here know that us they call it as malcolm's baldridge national quality award and it has seven pillars of excellence business excellence and there is a european foundation for quality management in europe they are all exceptional models in fact when i was in tata tcs we used to have the similar thing like malcolm's baldridge national quality award like a tata business excellence award we used to call it as jrd qb quality value okay but these models factored everything required for a business any business but there is a new wrapper required that is called the digitalization wrapper on the top of your conventional businesses that type of business excellence models are not there in the world this is where i think this is a new thing i introduced passionately that is called a lean digital business excellence model i will talk about it so if lean aspect is not considered when you are digitalizing the lean started in 1903 i guess or 10 at ford they never called it as a lean but it is nothing but elimination of non value adding activities but after that japanese really mastered in that 1990s it became very popular the manufacturing industry took the complete advantage of the lean right i am sure you know that how to eliminate the waste with the lean so now the context it changed all the lean practices started probably in the first second and third revolutions but now you are in the fourth industrial revolution don't you think you need to contextualize lean so you need to really look at don't build the digital enterprises which are fat to build and operate you must build lean digital enterprises just to give an idea what is lean defined by gurus just remember something called warm pit w o r m p i t so these are all non value adding activities in any of the organization whatever the industry you are so waiting time over production rework people moving from one location to another location that is warm pit is your over processing and inventory high o inventory and then transportation these are all the ways which you have to look at in the context of your digitalization digital technologies help you to make your organizations leaner lean itself will give you a lot of methods and tools so that the lean tools lean methods plus digital technologies that is modern cyber system build a very sophisticated lean digital enterprise okay don't build digital enterprises that's very key okay now let me tell you now what is go lean digital is what something i have promoting okay don't go digital go lean digital for this i am going to give you some tips with my experience okay 12 12 5 this i call it as a 12 12 file business excellence model all business executives needs to understand this including of course the technology executive what does it mean so this lean digital business executive model answers three important things one is what to digitalize are we clear it's not just simply digitalizing your supply chain management process or hr process or finance process or i offer my services through mobile uh, social media car console refrigerator door and watch and all that's omni present that's not digitalization that is only just a drop in the ocean so we must understand what to digitalize the whole anatomy of your organization needs to be looked at like human anatomy human body is nothing but so many organs i cannot say i will just uh, Uh, repair some uh, two organs and say everything is fine if you are not doing well i have to look at the total organs and see that i have to repair the master health checkup is required right so you need to look at what is that organization anatomy and what to digitalize you need to answer yourself based on so many factors that's why i call it as a uh, digitalize then acquire a digital mindset you can't execute with your old mindset and finally how to digitalize that's where you fail mostly so we need to look at how to digitalize i think these three aspects so i divided this uh, excellence model into four business clusters and 12 building blocks four thinking clusters and 12 lean digital thinking principles this is called a digital manifesto 
you have election manifesto you have this lean manifesto like that you also have a manifesto for digitalization that i call it as a lean digital thinking and finally the life cycle okay how to digitalize let me go one by one here look at here four clusters you as a senior executive needs to look at when somebody says that what to digitalize you need to answer a question that depends on so many parameters your management bandwidth your budget your capabilities right and your business competition your customer needs expectations based on that you need to decide what to digitalize it's not just only one or two parameters you factor whether you want to digitalize operations okay then you have to digitalize workplaces the workplaces could be a shop floor the workplace could be a dealer shop the workplace could be um, a retail store it depends on a mining industry the workplace might be different right so you need to look at in the context of your industry if you want to digitalize operations you need to digitalize three things workplaces and business processes there will be at least 11 to 12 business processes you will have okay digitalization started with marketing process that's where last 10 years everybody is doing digital marketing and that's not enough right you need to have digital sales digital finance digital hr digital supply chain and logistics and uh, or digital product life cycle management digital inventory management digital procurement management what not you have to look at what processes needs to be digitalized and finally the most important thing is the operating model the operating model is nothing but do you need to change your organizational structure do you need to introduce any new roles yes of course you are introducing but you need to do it in holistically right that is our and then if you want to create a blueprint for next three to five years you look at the extreme left you need to design digital business vision you need to design digital business models proactively and you need to have a digital business strategy and you need to quantify your digital business you might need to define new key performance indicators which doesn't exist did you hear 10 years back net promoter score no right that is a new metric you are monitoring like that if you digitalize your whole organizations you have to look at that new key metrics also okay then most importantly you have to digitalize your products i already shown the examples the products like a bed sheet product like a car right a product like a baby diaper okay or a chair or equipment your products and services anywhere anytime using any devices you have to provide the services for all these things most importantly which we came from our friends technology guys needs to look at now it plus ct plus ot the strategy will change it's not it only or ot only or ct only separate it is a convergence your strategy needs to be around that the modern cyber system how it will help you have to create a strategy the modern cyber system it governance is gone it is a very myopic view you need to look at the convergence of technology the governance will change the architecture will change so if you are a senior executive from the board of directors to the uh, bottom level you need to look at what to digitalize out of these 12 building blocks based on your requirements you have to choose rather ad hoc don't select ad hocly then how do you select that as per your requirement i will also explain the next one is i think this look at a lot of people say i think very interesting thing is i want to digitalize whatever i think when the pandemic started if somebody started using microsoft teams or zoom they are saying we are digitalized i'm sorry that's only a drop in the ocean okay i started using productivity applications like microsoft 365 google cloud no i'm sorry that is a drop in the ocean okay so look at extreme left side in the last 50 60 years what we are doing is we are automating the processes and digitizing the documents taking the photos or scanned copies or some of the other documents and all that is called digitization if we call digitization it is very 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 lowest level of i think even not automation it is you are just digitizing documents taking photographs images or some documents and all but you are using those digitized assets during your processes which are automated then that is automation so digitization is only a part of automation that you have to understand then when i say digitalization then your operational technology your uh, communication collaboration technologies your uh, it and all these things are coming in and finally they are touching every element look at here the extreme right side you look at there if you want to transform the whole organization all 12 building blocks will be digitalized if you want to transform only operations then three building blocks will be digitalized so you have to choose your path based on your requirement so that's where you have to understand digitization is different i already explained digitalization means probably it may not be transformative in nature a few building blocks you are digitalizing with modern cyber system if it is a complete transformation maybe organization level you are doing it. 
this is what to digitalize. The next one is, I think, very interesting thing. Um, the execution, digital execution with the traditional mindset assures you a successful failure. Okay, you must have a new thinking. That's where I introduced a new manifesto called Lean Digital Thinking. I may spend a couple of things here. So when you are starting a digitalization, you must always ask for any digital program or any digital initiative you started, you need to ask a question, am I going to deliver unforgettable moments of experience to my customers? Am I going to optimize my human interventions? Am I going to establish a real-time communication collaboration so that from anywhere, anytime, we can do a virtual business operations, we can innovate, we can learn and all? And can I safeguard my privacy and safety? Can I see the future, predict and improve the business performance? So if these questions you ask when you start digitalization, your digital mindset will change. In fact, in my book, this itself is 150 pages. I have just encapsulated it into uh, one slide. So if you want to acquire a digital mindset, you need to understand each and every block here. Then only you get a new thinking. You know that what to digitalize, but if you don't know, the digital mindset and you never establish a common digital language and if you talk to board of directors what is digitalization somebody say digitization somebody say digitalization somebody say uh, the digital transformation it's all confusion so if you have this mindset there is a common digital purpose common language common standard and everything is standardized and you start thinking in the right direction this is called i think the acquired digital mindset now if you take any programs, so digital programs or any defense programs or construction projects or irrigation projects, I'm sure you agree with me. There is always a life cycle, right? If you don't have that structured life cycle for the digitalization, don't do it like an IT project. If you do the, the digitalization like IT project, you will fail. That's where there is a structured life cycle required with five pages we defined like inspire, assess, innovate, experiment, institutionalize. This can be discussed very separately. But inspire means bringing all from top to bottom. If you are one like employees, 100,000 employees have to have common understanding of digitalization. You should also have <clears throat> something like a common language you have to set. Then you have to know digitalization cannot be started without you knowing where you are. If I want to digitalize the supply chain management process, I should know what is the digital quotient of supply chain. What are the digital strengths? What are the digital weaknesses of my supply chain management process? If you know the baseline, you know the gaps, then you know where to go year one, year two, year three. You define a benchmark without knowing the current base state, I'm sorry, then you fail. Yes, I want to become a prime minister, but what is my baseline? I'm just an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur becoming a prime minister, it doesn't happen like that. It may be a 20 years journey or 15 years journey, that too with the dedicated efforts if you're really having that passion and commitment right so i think without knowing the baseline the current baseline state of the digital state you can't move to the benchmark state that easily that's where this is ss is required then innovate experiment and institutionalize this is how to digitalize part and out of this pages ss i want to just spend a couple of minutes here look at here i showed you the 12 billion blocks right i explained what to digitalize Acquiring digital mindset, the 12 principles I said. This is a two by two assessment you have to do. This is the way you know where you are. What is your maturity level? I call this as a lean digital quotient. Very simple. Digitalization is nothing but 12 by 12. And you need to find, if you want to find what is the digital uh, process perspective, if you want to assess, you assess against these 12 principles and find what are you. That means your digital CRM is an opportunist or entrant or cultivator. Cultivator is the highest maturity level. Okay, now I want to just give an idea, another two minutes I'll conclude. So with all these things, you understand the modern cyber system and it is touching the 12 building blocks of your organization. Out of that, only three are technology. Nine are business side. What are those three? Technology strategy, technology architecture, technology governance. Only three are the business uh, technology side. If you look at the nine things I talk about, business vision, Business strategy, business model, business outcomes, products, services, processes, workplace, operating model, all nine are from business side. 
and this technology is impacting that as a business guys you need to understand these nine building blocks are getting impacted which one i have to digitalize first okay and to digitalize all those nine building blocks my dear technology friends the software applications landscape is completely changed last 50 60 years we have been talking about process automations that's where the systems of records but today we are talking about experiences mobile phone social analytics you are engaging the customers then systems of engagement you got the things now because of the ot operational technology sensors networks and all they are all systems of things these three type of software applications are coming together to support your digitalization of the nine building blocks on the top of that you have systems of intelligence where you get artificial intelligence machine learning hindsight foresight and this is what technology landscape today these categories of applications are you able to build are you able to design build and operate as a technology organization if these four categories you can't support those nine building blocks of digitalization okay so with that now finally i will conclude all these things possible only when you build the skills from the top to bottom all employees needs to understand if you have 100000 employees everybody needs to understand what is digitalization why i should know digitalization what to digitalize how to digitalize but in their language if an entry level associate is there i have to answer all those questions but in their language at their level of experience if it is a board of directors at their level of experience right a strategic leadership tactical leadership that's where the digital learning academies have to be redesigned 95% of the employees in the organizations are business employees only 5% are less than that are technology employees i have to look at the skill improvement of the 95% or 96% of more business employees we have to build new skills new behaviors new attitudes it's entirely different they need to understand the impact of technology on the businesses i have not talked here anything like uh, clustering classification blockchain smart contracts consensus mechanism that is technology language i already all, all what i talked here is the impact of those technologies and their convergence on the business so you need to acquire that you need to create a new career progression paths and moving from top to bottom or bo sorry bottom to up a new skills need so the learning academies have to build very comprehensive career progression paths in the digital businesses and build those skills to move from one role to another role okay to summarize number 1 empower business executives with the knowledge of technology impact on the whole organization anatomy look at that 12 building blocks and then every business is a technology business there is a fedex declared we are a software company but they are a courier company master uh, uh, that call what is that master class what is that uh, payment company i'm sorry master card they said we are a technology company we are not a payment card company right so you have to think now as a ceo or a cfo or uh, any cxo or a business unit head you have to ask yourself my business is a technology business period the reason is your nine building blocks are getting impacted with technology unlike in the past in the past mostly technology impacted processes and whether it is a business process or industry process in our soft law but now it is nine building blocks so every business guy has to understand that acquire digital mindset our 12 lean digital thinking principles and use that digital business excellence model which i have shown 12 building blocks 12 lean digital thinking principles and five phases digitalization and drive this uh, digital programs like tech startups this is another cultural shift i am advising because the change is constant and instant it is coming very rapidly business guys and technology guys can't say i basically don't have the required agility infrastructure i like, know drive them like startup so that you have the required agility okay and rename your it this is consistently i am saying don't call your technology department as it is myopic view you have it ct ot bt so many technologies got added simply call technology and cio is not chief information officer he is a chief intelligence officer today okay that's it i think uh, so we have some very short time we'll take some questions uh thanks a lot mr rao for this interesting and so detailed session and i do see already some of the questions are coming in 
So should we move to the Q&A session? Are you ready for that? Yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So Abhay, Abhay is asking, what should be the starting point in the digital world? Everybody is talking about cloud, mobility, analytics, intelligence, but what should be the actual entry point? Certainly, this is not the entry point. That's what I've been telling, right? The entry point is the business pain point. Okay, what is that the problem I'm going to resolve? If suppose in the supply chain, there is some problem needs to be resolved. For that, I might need IoT, blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning. Okay, those technologies will solve this problem effectively. The third step is to understand to solve that problem. I might need mobile, I might need analytics, I might need cloud. There is nothing like one single technology solve the problem. That world is gone. There is nothing like cloud only solve this problem. There is nothing like mobile only solve this problem. This is a mobile social analytics combination can solve the problem. So start with business problem. Then you get this is a confusion we have. We had 10 years back. You remember SMAC we started? Social mobile analytics cloud. At in TechMindra we started NMAX and all. Then customers asking uh, what technology to be used well. Total confusion. After six months I realized it is not going fine. Let me start with business. This is the problem. This is the solution. To implement this solution, to get this benefit, I will suggest you cloud, mobile, and analytics or BPM. Please start like that. Then you get the right answer. Well explained then. Uh, so there are there is another question. Uh, with all the technologies coming in to scan the human body and etc., how harmful it is and how is the privacy secure? See, I think today also we have been experiencing so many technologies. Like if you go and take CT scan or MRI or X-ray, I mean, these are all technologies are there. But today, what's happening is, uh, uh, for example, you take, uh, there are 250 sensors are there for to have the body uh, measurements. I mean, body measurement means the health parameters. Okay. The sensors which you put it on the body, then it reads all the indicators. For example, if you take a baby diaper today, the baby diaper has sensors to measure the blood pressure, temperature, and wetness of the diaper. And that data will be appeared in the mobile phone of a mom sitting at office. Right? So, I think uh, these technologies don't harm, but still there is a debate, the electromagnetic waves, and if you 5G technologies coming in, there is a very, I think, the crowded the towers will be there. But there is a debate happening. It may not affect the brain, 5G, but some people in Europe say that it may affect your skin and it will get into inside the skin and it may uh, probably create some problem with the tissue. Okay. But it is far. So what I'm saying here is the technologies, whatever are tested, I think with the regulatory bodies and all, they take the necessary precautions and we trust and go. Even vaccines, I think they were done in one year. So we have trusted and gone. We God knows what really they have done, right? I think uh, privacy, yes, it is very important, especially the brain computer interface is coming in now. Uh, I think uh, the brain hacking is possible. Your uh, memories and uh, emotions can be hacked. That may take 10 years from now. I'm sure uh, Elon Musk already started that. And, uh, and you have a DNA editing is possible today, which is mature, uh, CRISPR. So a cat can have uh, glowing eyes when you take the uh, DNA of an insect. Okay. So human DNAs are also now getting a, a copy and paste. Okay. So I think those technologies are coming in. Okay. So there is another question and I think it would be the last question we'll take. Uh, so Shiju is asking, which is the best way to start lean startup point for a SME firm, especially when fund is a major constraint? When cost is a major constraint? Yes. Okay, see, lean is different from lean digital. Okay, our friend Eris Reed introduced lean canvas. Okay, so I'm sure uh, that canvas gives you an excellent information about how do you design your business. Any startup, I also fundamentally suggest I practice it. Okay, there is a canvas, I think they defined. So it, it talks about which customer segments you want to address, what problems you want to solve for the customers, you are doing a proper analysis and to solve those problems, what is your product and service? Whether your product and service has the value proposition better than the competition? What is your unfair advantage? Is a differentiation do you have? 
what is the revenue streams and new pricing strategies you are defining what is the cost structure you have to have that canvas to ensure that your business is designed properly at least but what i am talking is a lean digitalization is different from lean canvas lean canvas is only for business model which is one part of our 12 building blocks please understand that i said 12 building blocks right <laughs> in that there is one element called business model for that you use the lean canvas like lean canvas there are so many tools and techniques are required like a playbook required for the whole 12 building blocks digitalization while well, explained again so with this we already come to an end of today's session i hope all our attendees found it very useful but there are actually a lot more questions uh, so i would uh, tell the attendees that feel free to mail them to us and we will request our experts to address them if mr rao has have some spare time and thank you mr rao again for sparing your valuable time thank with you, us sir. and thanks thank to you. all our attendees for joining today i do hope you found yes. found it useful before you leave everyone i would request to request you to fill up the feedback form this time you can and this time we would like you to know that if you are interested in attending more detailed workshop like this on the other aspects of lean digital transformation or not we have mentioned the various areas of feedback form so do fill up and let us know the interest you have thank you all again on spoke sharing for valuable time stay safe stay healthy everyone and enjoy a great weekend ahead goodbye Thank you friends bye 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 everyone